You know, now more than ever, we need to rely on each other. When I joined the military, you know, I thought the most honorable thing a person can do uh, is to stand up for what they believe in. I believed in this country, and I still do, especially with all you fine people here today and currently serving in the military overseas. I never understood politics, and to be quite honest, I didn't care to. That is, until I came across the issue of geoengineering. There is substantial evidence that these programs are going on currently, not only from the testimonies you're hearing today, but from doctors, scientists, and activists around the world. This is a global issue. A quote from the U.S. Air Force document reads, in 2025, U.S. aerospace forces can own the weather by capitalizing on emerging technologies. Ironically, there are also doctors like David Keith, Alan Robach, and Ken Caldera, all trying to convince the American people that these climate engineering programs are a good thing to help fight global warming. When confronted, they deny these programs as good. I, I decided to take matters into my own hands, and I had my own local rainwater tested. When I got my test results back, it shocked me. I had found heavy metals, specifically barium, strontium, and aluminum, known metals in aerosol disbursement patents. While looking into this further, I met with people with the same metal showing up in their blood tests. And as I look around today, I currently see people all over that are sick having health problems that are consistent with heavy metal toxicity. Mainstream media blames these global warming anomalies only on CO2, without any mention from the catastrophic climate engineering programs that are currently connected to completely disrupting weather patterns. This is not a time for discussion, but a time for action. We need help from our enlisted military personnel as well as any officers involved with these programs, especially anyone a part of Operation Indigo Skyfold or any similar programs. Please help shed light on these issues because like Dane will tell you, time is not on our side. So if you thought the government doesn't have your best interests in mind, you're right. The question is, what are we going to do about it? We need to take action because this affects all those who inhabit the earth, especially those that don't have a voice in this fight, and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. What would be their voice on the matter? All other sh issues seem to fall by the wayside by the importance of stopping e geoengineering. I've talked to local board of supervisors, I've talked to EPA, I've talked to congressmen, but no investigation has taken place as of yet, and I know most of you in the crowd can uh, relate. So I have a big problem with this illegitimate government and its federal bureaucracies. I sacrificed four years of my life defending the people of my country just to come home and find there are greater threats here domestically. <laughs> Our questions aren't being addressed and time is running out, so in closing, I just ask the military brothers and sisters to stand with us, the side of humanity, and to test this corrupt regime and to put a stop to these crimes against our planets and humanity. Come from the shadows and know that you are not alone. We can provide the cover necessary and the support for exposing this. Uh, I've been practicing neurology for 18 years in Redding area in Northern California, basically covering a, a wide area and wide range of neurological conditions. And what I have seen is increase in the number of what we call is neurodegenerative disease and Alzheimer's disease. These kind of conditions are, we don't know exactly what is the cause of them, uh, mostly considered multifactorial due to different reasons. Environment has a, a strong effect on them. They start very gradually, they progress, we don't have treatment for them and we don't have ways of prevention. We just have some medications and remedies that might help to basically decrease some of the symptoms or some of the presentation of the condition. 
I have seen the rise, which doesn't mean much because in private practice you have a very narrow scope of the general population. But uh, what we see by kind of searching the data, we, we see that this is something that has happened uh, as a, a kind of wide trend all over the basically world. Uh, world Health Organization, WHO, reports that in 2010, about 35 million people with dementia, and they anticipated, anticipated by 2050 that would be tripled, means that 115 million cases. Uh, interestingly, uh, talking about the negative side of what we are dealing in the society, uh, National Institute of Health in 2011 and after that, New York Times and some other mainstream media, they basically reported some data that say that the dementia is on decline. Means that the number of them decreasing. As you probably have experienced, they don't lie exactly. They just massage the truth. What they did, they combined the result of dementia due to a stroke and after cardiovascular disease with Alzheimer's, which has a different uh, kind of uh, underlying cause. But what we have a data from February of 2015 from the Alzheimer's Association uh, says that from year 2000 to year 2013, there has been 71% increase in the causes of death due to Alzheimer's disease, but there has been 14% decrease in the cause of death due to heart disease, which is more accurate, it means that we have had progress in technology, the heart disease and a stroke is treated better, the number of deaths due to that is less, but in regard to Alzheimer's is opposite, it means that there is an increase. Now, after this discussion comes to the basically mainstream, the argument in the medical community or defense in that uh, why the Alzheimer's is increased, they say, well, because the uh, population is aging and uh, our doctors are better, which basically the first part that the population is aging has some truth in it, but the second part doesn't make sense at all because we know that since 90s, the technology that we use in the basic the diagnosing and treating the Alzheimer really has not changed much. It means that we still go by the interviews, by the gathering evidence and excluding other causes. So what are the other factors, environmental factor? What is the most important one that you have heard a lot about it? Aluminum. Aluminum is neurotoxic. But uh, the reason that the regular aluminum, like the cup of aluminum or the pottery of aluminum, was not causing significant problem because they were not very really small molecules or particles. And brain and the nervous system is covered with blood-brain barrier, which is a sheath that protects them. Now imagine that if these are nanoparticles, means that they are very, very small particles, they just very, very easily penetrate through the brain and nervous system, and they definitely have deleterious effect and cause problem. We know for a fact that they are passing through because we have a huge line of research now on the medications that they use based on this nanotechnology uh, industry, which because it's a very, very feasible way to bring the medication to the brain while the uh, blood-brain barrier does not let uh, a lot of medication get there. So putting that all together brings us to this issue that the nanoparticles or aluminum could have a lot of negative effect and could cause basically Alzheimer's or other neurodegenerative disease, which is kind of group of disease like Parkinson's and things like that. Uh, my time is up and I, I leave the rest to the, uh, your uh, thinking. Thank you very much.
Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here tonight. I've never been to Reading. Um, it, it's an honor to be here uh, because uh, Dane asked me uh, to come aboard the legal team, and uh, it's probably the most important thing I've ever done. Uh, Joe's on our legal team as well. Um, he just wrote a, a great letter uh, to the uh, Mount Shasta or the Shasta County Air Quality Control Management District on uh, August 11th. And I just wanted him to talk briefly about this letter because he's uh, been involved in this a little longer than I have. Joe? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Joe Marmon out of Auburn, Sacramento area. Uh, probably five years ago, I wrote to the Department of Defense and Undersecretary of the Army and uh, Leon Panetta. And I quoted 50 U.S. codes and then some other sections after that I can't remember. And I said, look at the... United States Code says you cannot experiment on the American public, and if you do, you've got to report it to Congress within 30 days. Where's the proof that it did that? I got a couple letters back, and they said, we don't know what you're talking about. So I followed up with letters to NOAA and to the Army and Air Force and with freedom of information requests. They said, we don't know what you're talking about either. We're in the process of preparing a lawsuit and strategizing whether it's going to be... <laughs> Thank you. We're just strategizing to see if it's going to be class action, or I think it's a lot more manageable if we just name about five or six or ten plaintiffs, rather than give, obligating the attorneys to give notice to the whole class. So anyway, we're still working on that. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, Dane asked me to come aboard. Um, the legal team because of, I have a, a, because of my media background, I do entertainment law. Uh, one of the reasons that the, the, the suit is being filed, uh, of course, is to you know, correct the, the mistakes that are being made, but is also to get the media to start reporting on this because until the media... Because until the media reports on this, it doesn't exist to the general public. John Kennedy, in 1961, uh, giving a speech to the Newspaper Publishers Association in New York City, one of his greatest speeches ever, talking about the secrecy of the media, stated, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And he went on to say that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. And that's what's happening. So uh, part of the suit, as, as I said, is to get this out to the media so that people understand what's going on. Four years ago, I'd never heard anything about geoengineering. I didn't know, I'd never heard of harp. I never heard of a chemtrails, aerosol spraying. My wife, uh, you may know her as Angela Black, she's got a radio show on Revolution Radio, uh, freedomslips.com, three days a week, has had Dale on the show, um, and that's how I got to meet him. Um, uh, started, you know, every time we got in the, we moved up to South Lake Tahoe, and we, every time we got in the car, she'd start yelling at the skies and pilots and planes and all this, and I really, I thought she'd lost her marbles. And, <laughs> and, and then one day she said, you know what, she says, you lecture, you write about the Kennedy assassination, you know that the Warren Commission was a, full of, was a bunch of crap, why can't you take a step back and understand that the government isn't coming clean on this? And so I started doing my research, listening to Dane and uh, reading about it, and, and I came to the realization that if we had people like these people that have come out today, tonight to speak with you, and some other people that are coming out, that if we had them in a courtroom, I think we, I, we could prove, Joe and I, by a preponderance of evidence, that this is happening to a jury. So uh, there's, it's just not the two of us. We've, we've got a, a team of at least seven attorneys, two others that are in Canada, uh, and they're going to be coordinating their efforts with us uh, so that uh, we have a, a, as big as a media bounce as we can when, when we here in the States file the action and when they file the action.